Hey, what's going on? My name is Bim, and today we're gonna be talking about something a little bit out of my wheelhouse. It's an enthusiast keyboard. Not even like a gaming keyboard. Uh, this is the Keychron K8, the 10 keyless version, uh, mechanical optic with the one with optical switches. I wanted, because I'm not a hobbyist. I'm not a, a keyboard enthusiast. I wouldn't spend like $300 on, on keycaps and new switches just to make it feel better. That's not me, that's not what my needs are for keyboards, but I wanted to see how well it stacks up. How well will this enthusiast keyboard, or I guess any enthusiast keyboard, serve your gaming needs? Let's take a look at it, let's get into it, let's go. All right, here's the box. Obviously, I had unboxed this before. I just wanted to show you the process. It's actually pretty good packaging. So that lift up, shows you the layout. It shows you which keys you need to swap out if you're going between like Mac and Windows. There's this nice foam thing. And then you've got the keyboard itself. Pulls out just like that. You've got a plastic cover. Chuck that out of the way. So you've got your keyboard right there get that out of the way for now you've got an instruction manual it comes with not this cable <laughs> it comes with a cable like this so it comes with a cable that is angled like this isn't it like it's black it's also braided a very nice quality cable it's very similar to this i think it's a little bit longer than this um i i am just too lazy to crawl back uh behind my computer and pull it out uh, but it's, you know, exactly, pretty much exactly like this with the same angle, uh, nice braided cable, extra keys for the, you know, swapping of Mac and Windows also comes with like nice brightly colored. These are default actually. By default, it's the Mac keys and these bright, ugly ass orange keys. Good thing they come with like gray spares. So I replace them. I don't know what these things do. I assume one of them is to pull out the key, the other is to pull out the switch. I guess I'll find out the hard way. And there she is, the Keychron K8 in all its glory. And the reason why I went with an enthusiast keyboard versus another gaming keyboard is because it has certain features that I really wanted that I couldn't find in another gaming keyboard at a certain price range. So this is at a perfect like um, price point price to like features benefit ratio for me. For one, it's TKL, right? T 10, 10 keyless layout. I do miss my numpad. I used it a lot, but the space that this saves me, you know, the, my mouse real estate is worth the trade-off, I would say. So it can be used wired or wirelessly if you want to use it wired. Here is the USB port right here. It's on the far left versus, you know, most keyboards having it in the center. That's why they give you this thing. And then you could swap from wired just with a switch wired. And then you've got Bluetooth here. And then in the center position that is off here, you could go from Windows to Mac. And it's always going to be on Windows because I am on a Windows machine and it can pair with three devices. So with my setup, this is PC, laptop, PlayStation 5. Yes, you can pair it with your PlayStation 5. Makes chatting way easier, way easier. Um, to switch between, you know, one, two, or three, just press the function key and one of these three. Another great feature of this particular model of the K8 is that it is hot swappable. That means without soldering, you can switch switches in and out. The reason why I decided to get something hot swappable, even though I'm never going to change out these, these switches, is unless, you know, they break. So the reason why I left the 512 is because my daughter, who was one at the time, likes hitting the keys. And when she did, she broke a couple of them. Um, and because I couldn't just replace the switches, I had to get a brand new keyboard. Back here, we have legs. Ta-da! The legs actually feel very plasticky, uh, not very good quality, I would say, but I think they would do the job of holding up your, your keyboard at an angle that you'd prefer. Unfortunately, there is just one angle it can go up to. It isn't all that adjustable. So it's just, you know, either there or it's not. In terms of the actual keys themselves, the plastic of the keys feels great, actually. They feel... If there's a word that I could use, it would be 
silky. They feel silky. Um, I was told these are ABS keys. They're like made of ABS plastic. No idea what that means. Um, and it is a softer plastic versus the alternative, which are PBT keys. So because they're a bit softer, the sound that they make is a little more gentle. Um, and also because these are um, brown switches, they're supposed to be, you know, tactile, but they should, should sound still like pretty gentle. And they do for the most part. One thing to note that it is, maybe because it is hot swappable, very tall. Like this thing is an inch tall, at least already, like on its own, plus you've got the keys. So it's actually like when it's on the table and your wrists uh, are resting for typing, it actually gets pretty uncomfortable. This is the type of keyboard that would definitely benefit from uh, wrist rest. Let's talk about the specs of the keys themselves. So actuation force is around 55 grams. The pre-travel is 1.8 millimeters. The travel distance is four millimeters. It, but here's the, th the weird thing, at least in my experience. When I first tried these, I was fresh off the G512s. One of the first things I thought was the travel distance on these things was like way longer than the 512s. But it turns out when I look at the spec sheet, they're identical. Like they're both four millimeters, but I don't know. For some reason, I feel like, is it the height? I'm not sure, but for some reason, I feel like my fingers travel just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit longer before I actually bought them out the key. I don't know why. It's just a feeling, you know, the more you use it though, the more it doesn't matter. But like, just if you're fresh from another keyboard, it might feel that way for you too. About the build quality, the aluminum frame is actually pretty nice and hefty. There is some weight to this thing. It's not going anywhere if it's on your table. Um, there are also like rubber stoppers here that prevent that from happening. One thing that that kind of does annoy me is the raised like frame of it. Uh, when I first started using it, my finger would hook here, I don't know why. Like when I would glide my hand and it would get annoying. Um, but the more you use it, the more you kind of don't notice it. But this kind of gets, it used to, at least at the start, it got annoying, this little bit here. In terms of dedicated function, this key right here changes your RGB setting. There are, I think 15, on the website it says 15, then on like another copy it says 18. So 15 to 18 different um, lighting modes. I don't think there's software that will allow you to like customize the lighting per key. Uh, I, I don't know if it exists. I haven't seen it, probably doesn't. Now this key is weird. The only job this thing has is to pull up Cortana and or Siri, and it's kind of annoying to hit it on accident sometimes. I think that is print screen? I don't know. For the battery, on the website, it does say 240 hours. I've never been able to, to drain the battery. For the most part, I do use it wired. Um, there were three like, consecutive days when I used it wireless just to see how fast I could drain it. It never got close. So 240 hours doesn't seem impossible. I think it does. It can reach that uh, before you need to, to do another charge. All right, now to answer the question in the title, the, the, the thing you clicked on this video for, how does it perform for gaming so here's what i did i took a phone and i recorded the the a screen and this keyboard at super slow motion and the output of that super slow motion video is a 30 frames per second video but you know in slow motion um so the the test that i did isn't to determine how many frames it takes the keyboard to respond it is more a comparison between this enthusiast keyboard and a keyboard that was manufactured and marketed specifically for gaming. So again, it doesn't tell you the exact number of frames. It just tells you how well it does compared to a gaming keyboard. And what I found was interesting. So at the very best performance, at the very, like the shortest time possible on both the G512, and the K8 
pretty much identical. But at the worst of them, like there are times, you know, latencies fluctuate. So, but the worst of it, the Keychron lags a few frames behind. But remember, this is frames in super slow motion. So if played in real time, it's practically imperceptible. This is wired, of course, because when you become, when you, you start using it wireless, at least in my experience, with my Bluetooth setup, with my computer, the lag is insane. <laughs> like, uh, just you know, being able, just pulling, you know, when you press a key and you ex your mind, your brain expects it to, to happen, and there's just a few, you know, seconds, like micro half, micro second, half a second delay, and it just kind of annoys you. Uh, it's it's jarring sometimes. So if you want a game on it, don't use it Bluetooth. Use it wired always. Okay. So in conclusion, is it a good keyboard, especially for the price? Definitely. Hot swappable keys means you'll just be able to, you know, replace switches when they break. You'll be able to replace all the keycaps, you know, with nice uh, colors, which I did. I did that. I bought new keys. <laughs> is it good for gaming in terms of latency? As far as my testing goes, yes. It is, at the worst of times, a few frames slower. But it, like in real time, imperceptible. It is, it, you won't notice it at all. You'll, you'll play it just as smooth on this thing as you know, one of the high end, well, I didn't, I didn't test it against every gaming keyboard, but from the gaming keyboard that I did test it with, which, you know, Logitech has always been known for low latency, right? So if it's as good as a Logitech, it is, you know, conceivably as good as another brand of gaming keyboards. And you know, it's not, with gaming, it's not about your tools, it's about your skills, I bet. If you give Shroud some A4 tech, you know, membrane keyboard, he'd still destroy everybody. Should you use it wirelessly? For gaming? No. For everything else? Why not? Anyway, this has been BIM and this has been the Keychron K8. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned a little bit something today. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye bye. For real though? I want to buy keycaps.